Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pomager. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't done it yet, go ahead and hit subscribe so you can see some fantastic. We have authors, artists, filmmakers, creators of all kinds here on the Hanging With Web Show. So don't forget to check out the description down below. We are here with author Richard Rosen as a Hanging With Web Show alumnus and has also got a brand new book out we're going to talk about today. It's Angelic Planetary Management. That's right, you heard me, angelic planetary management. You don't know what that's about, do you? You have no idea, but we're going to tell you. So, Richard, thanks for hanging with us again. All right, thanks, thanks for, for being here. here. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. So let's talk angelic planetary management. What am I looking at, man? <laughs> what, what is this exactly? Well, the reason I wrote this book, Gary, is because so few people have an understanding of what's going to be happening to this world, what is happening, and it's very discouraging. You look around, you see morality going down the tubes you look at possible wars and everything mm -hmm. but everything's under control and that's what i wanted to get across in this book that there really is a management structure beyond our material vision beyond well, most of the beyond our understanding in some cases yes well that's why i wrote the book to bring it into our understanding yeah. to give encouragement and also how to cooperate with it garrett in mm -hmm. other words there's beings, all kinds of celestial beings. People know about guardian angels. Well, okay. they're very real. Each one of us has one, of course. But there are also uh, groups of angels assigned to different portions of civilization. For example, okay. the advances in health are not just by accident. They're actually directed and controlled by seraphic angels that are in charge of that. Someone, that means there's an angel in charge of this show who's going to make it go huge, and millions of copies of books are going to get sold. I like your application. <laughs> See? That's what I did there? Okay. So, work on it, Angel. Get, get, get going here, uh, Clarence. We need some help. So, uh, how has reader response been? What are readers saying? Are, are you well, guys it, out there? It's, it's brand new. I just got it out. Oh, shiny so. new. Shiny new book, guys. We're going to put links down below for you so you can find this yep. brand new book. Um, how's it been? It's been, a, been a year and a half since we talked last. Yeah, it's uh, been yes. quite a while, yeah. yeah. Been, How's it been going? Uh, very good, because all my books are on the same genre uh -huh. of the reality beyond what we can see. You know, like Life After Death, What Happens yep. Step by Step, yep. which we did the interview Yeah, on. we did. We talked about that last time. Yeah. Readers are loving that, huh? They're coming in there. Uh, yeah, that's, that's my most popular book, okay. because everyone is concerned about what happens when you die. Mm -hmm. And uh, generally, I have found people that have lost someone close to them, uh, like, for example, a woman, her grandson, 23, died suddenly, devastated. So she bought this book, then she bought eight more for the rest of the family. And this has happened a couple of times. I like those kind of readers. Look, if you bought a copy of Lucky, buy seven more right now. You need to do that. Those are the perfect readers. Yes. And they're sharing your work, and they're sharing your study and, and your observations about humanity. And maybe they're, they're absorbing some of that, which is fantastic. They are absorbing it. And, and uh, that's why I write the books, because uh, I've been a student of what comes next mm -hmm. and God's supervision over us and how that happens in very great detail. Now, on this book, uh, on the planetary <laughs> angelic Well, my dear, there's, there's a PA system here that is really good apparently scared the hell out of me uh wow so okay oh we'll come back to that. <laughs> yeah no doubt okay so um all right so we're talking about people kind of absorbing the work and, and really getting the message and, and the message ultimately is this we each have a divine spirit that lives within us guiding us we have a life plan that's been given to us at birth and the whole idea is to be sensitive to that guidance of the spirit so we are actually following it and not obstructing it. So when your life is really, really gone down the tubes, 
generally it's because you've made your own problems, you haven't listened to that guidance. You know what I mean, Garrett? It's like you're getting a sense, you know, everybody has a guide their calendar. They say, what's well, really what's true in this situation? Yeah. And if you listen to that and you say, I'm going to do that because I know that's really true, you're going to be an okay. But if you say, I'd rather do this because... Well, there are so many external forces at play in our lives every day mm -hmm. that oftentimes we spend a lifetime reacting to yes. those to yes. those yes. material uh, forces that all yes. around us That's true. and ignoring that little voice in our head and ignoring those we, we grow up inherently understanding right and wrong and and, yeah. and what really is in our core belief mm -hmm. and then and we get older and we we chase our paychecks and we chase all of yes. these things around us to the point where our whole life has become reactionary. We're reacting to this exterior yeah. stimuli instead of that little voice in your head. And I love what you've done with your work, which is to say, you know that little voice? It's got some things to say to you. Slow down just a minute. Take a listen. And that's and right. See what you hear. Some some you won't hear anything. Sometimes you just you you you'll you'll feel like you're floundering, but almost always you'll end up on that right track. And 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 these are these are great ways to illustrate for people. That, that there is something beyond that physical stimuli that's coming at you every single day. That's well said. Uh, if I could, I'll give three very practical ways in making a decision on how to key in to that divine guidance. First is, what's your highest sense of what's true? We each have, have that, what I call the guide, the truth guide encounter. You kind of know, and you say, I know really what's true in this situation and what I should do. The other thing is, What's the greatest good that I can do for the most people for the longest time? And that's great criteria, because then you can't get away with fooling yourself. No, you can't. You can't. You can't be selfish. That's right. And the third is, when you look back, you want to be able to say, was this the most beautiful thing I could have done in a situation? I like that. I like that. I really, truly do, because that's, that's where we're coming from. That's, we do get all that external stimuli. That it comes at us 90 miles an hour. 90 you know, miles an teachers hour. Teachers and work friends and and you know between chasing our work and our things, and we sometimes forget about that. the The concept of listening to the universe, listening to God, it's been around a long time. It really has the the Hindus call it the Akashic uh, record, where it's the knowledge of God that's just floating in the universe, yeah. talking to you all the Correct. time. If you're listening. If you're listening. But if you're not listening, life can pile up on you in a hurry. It really can. You can get very confused and very lost. And this is this is a fantastic way to talk about this. This talks about the fact that that same voice that's in your head is actually running the world around you as well. If you if you could be, go with that flow instead of against it, you can do so much better. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, this is beautiful cover art, by the way. Um, we're going to try to spin that up over here for everybody to see. Um, who did your cover design for this? I did. You did this fantastic. Artists are artists. <laughs> we write it, we design it, you name it, we can get it done if you give us enough time. Uh, I'm looking forward to this read. This is going to be fantastic. Um, we are, uh, we've expanded the show a little bit. Uh, when we last talked to you, we did an interview about four and a half, five minutes, remember? Yeah. And, um, and we, we just stuck to the book. Well, one of the things that we realized is that people buy uh, from salesmen they know. So yes. they like to say, I know a guy, right? Yeah. So we want to get to know okay. Richard a little bit, okay? So what I did, so we could have a little bit of fun, was I told the girls, go out to the World Wide Web. Find me goofy, weird, uh, those, those crazy internet questions. I can ask Richard about, and then his real life answer okay. will be the thing that people go, oh, that Richard, he's the guy that said that, right? So, <laughs> Sounds good, uh, guys. All right, okay. so that's what we're going to try to do here. I'm going to look up, it's a double blind. I, we pile the cards up, they shuffle them up, it's like getting a deck, right? All right, there we go. Okay, well, we're talking about spirituality. We're talking about the divine. So, what would your spirit animal be? Wow. How would you compare yourself? What would your spirit What animal would I liken myself to be? Exactly, Is that what you exactly. Mean? yes. That little voice, that little voice that tells you right or wrong, is it a tiger, is it a bear, is it a, is, is it a mouse, is it a small voice? What kind of voice is it? It's a voice of such tender sweetness Loving kindness. So, like it's the only guy ever that got Bambi as a voice for a spirit animal. Correct. That's fantastic. Yeah. I love it, Richard. That's fantastic. Good answer. I love that. So, all right. You know what? Um, your books deal a lot with acceptance and accepting the spiritual around you. And um, but you know when we don't accept, things frighten us awful bad. Mm -hmm. People are afraid of everything from clowns to the dark. 
Yeah, what's Richard afraid of? Anything get inside your head a little bit and just kind of... Actually, uh, at this stage of my life, nothing, there's nothing I'm afraid of that I'm aware of. You see? That's, and that's what happens when you accept that, that there's Correct. something more it's around a, you. It's a life lived because the whole focus for our life is to become spiritual beings and make that link up with the divine spirit within us and the father of everything. And once you nice. know that, see, the love comes in. Because whenever I'm feeling insecure, Garrett, feeling, oh, I messed up or something, I just go interiorly. And I, and I, and I, I talk to God. I say, okay, Father, what do you think about that? And he'll tell me, I love you. I find no fault with you. Yes, you could have done it better, but still, you're doing the best you can, which I know I am. And so I have no fear. I don't have anyone to yell at me. Like That's nice. parents would yell at their children. Absolutely. It doesn't no, happen. It it's doesn't, the opposite. Exactly. And once you accept right. what's around you and you accept that spiritual part of yourself, there is nothing left to fear. Because there's never a lonely moment. There's never. Never. A, there's ne never. That's Garrett, right. that's perfect. That's never fantastic. a lonely moment. I love it. I love it. I really do. Wow. Ten minutes goes awfully fast on this show. We have been hanging out here with Richard Rosen, the author of Angelic Planetary Management. There's some other great books that we've talked about in the past. We're going to throw all of these links down below. We're going to show you Richard's social media platform so you can go and stalk him, send him messages, ask him <laughs> questions, all of those things. We're going to wrap it up by saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to our partners and friends at Something Unique Magazine, Space Coast Comics, Wordfire Press, Famous Faces and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, Heather Reed at the Asylum Convention Entertainment Services, and our great new friends over at the Brevard Renaissance Fair. We can't wait. We're going to see some amazing creative people out at the Renaissance Fair just in uh, January. Good. Uh, guys in costumes, actors, performers, wow. guys that are really keeping our history alive. So that's going to be a fantastic event we can't wait to get to. I'm GW Pometer, folks. We've been hanging with author Richard Rosen. Remember, subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Ow, 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 ow,